Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm doing another Kahoot. This video, I'm going to be covering antepartum nursing. Now, if you haven't done so already, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking the video. You're gonna love it, so press that like button now so you don't forget, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, guys, I now offer NCLEX, NGN uh, reviews and audio lessons on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Another way you can help support me in this channel is by by posting, posting this video on your social media network, or maybe to a friend that she knows in the nursing program, or even thinking about the nursing program to help my channel grow. Thank you so much, guys. And let's get started. Maternity antepartum nursing. Painless uterine contractions that occur throughout pregnancy is known as what? Braxton Hicks, Chadwick sign, Goodwill sign, or Heger sign. What do you guys think? Very good. Braxton Hicks. And I hate the word that the, they use painless because we know sometimes that Braxton Hicks is not painless. They can feel it, right? But uh, Braxton Hicks is what's known as the fake contraction. So it's contractions, but it's preparing that uterus for the for the real main event, but they are not true contractions. They're not uh, effective contractions, right? Braxton Hicks, very good. Which sign refers to the color of the vaginal walls, which changes from light pink to deep violet or purple color? What do you guys think? Is it Braxton Hicks, Chadwick's, Goodell, or Heger's? Four of you guys chose Braxton Hicks right after we went over Braxton Hicks. And I said to you that Braxton Hicks is the fake contractions. It's not really effective. We just talked about what Braxton Hicks is. And four of you chose Braxton Hicks. Come on, stop it. Okay. So with these four choices, you should have automatically eliminated Braxton Hicks. And when we're talking about the color changes of the vaginal wall turning to that deep violet or purple color, the correct answer is Chadwick. And the reason we see um, that color change, it's um, the accumulation, it's blood that's coming to that area that uh, causes that color change, okay? So it's um, the correct answer is Chadwick. That's the Chadwick sign. And 76 of you guys chose the correct answer, so very good. But um, just for test-taking purposes, guys, you know, if you're taking a test and you choose an answer, you know, you know that your answer was correct. If you get to another question and you don't know what the answer is, don't choose the one that you know for sure was correct for something else. Choose something else and take an edu I can't speak. Take an educated guess on your other choices, okay? Softening of the lower uterine segment, which may be present at six to eight weeks gestation is known as Heger sign. Is that true or false? What do you guys say? Very good. Um, many of you guys chose the right answer, but most of you guys chose the wrong answer. So softening of that lower uterine segment is the Heger sign. That is true. Goodell sign, a probable sign of pregnancy, is hardening of the cervix. Is that true or false? You guys on the live who were not able to make it, 
Put your answers in. What color do you think is the correct answer? True or false? Almost half and half. Okay, let's talk about this, guys. So the correct answer is false. Let me tell you something. And this is what the test writers, they do this a lot. Please do not fall for this. If the entire answer choice is not correct, so everything looks beautiful, but there's this one little thing that's wrong, it makes the whole answer choice wrong and choose something else. Look at what it says. The good old sign, which is a probable sign of pregnancy. All of that is right. The good old sign is a probable. It's not a positive. It is a probable. Maybe, most likely that patient is pregnant. Yes, it is a probable sign of pregnancy. But look at the rest. Is hardening of the cervix. No, it's not. The good old sign, which is a probable sign of pregnancy, it's softening of the cervix. You see, this one little word made the entire thing wrong. I don't care how beautiful your answer choice looks to you. If you see one thing that's wrong, eliminate it and go to your other answer choice. So that's what made it false, okay? The umbilical cord contains how many arteries, how many veins? The umbilical cord. One, one artery, one vein, one artery, two veins, two arteries, one veins, or two arteries, two veins. What do you guys think? And the correct answer, the umbilical cord guide, it can cord, it contains two arteries, one vein. And most of you guys chose the correct answer choice. Very good. Before amniocentesis, the patient should do what? Fast for six to eight hours, empty the bladder, drink at least 120 milliliters of fluid, or hold, excuse me, withhold prenatal vitamins. What do you guys say? That's a long needle, right? Very good. Most of you guys chose the correct answer. Empty the bladder because we don't want to accidentally um, uh, rupture or, or um, get that needle in the bladder instead of getting the amniotic fluid, which is what we want. We're not trying to uh, puncture that bladder. So you're going to make sure that that patient empties their bladder before the amniocentesis. And remember, the amniocentesis is very important because it looks for, you know, chromosomal um, abnormalities and also surfactant, right? We want to make sure surfactant's present. So uh, emptying the bladder is the correct answer choice. Ooh. Which is contraindicated during pregnancy? Is it iron, insulin, vitamin B12, or oral hypoglycemic agents? What do you guys think? I don't see much movement on the live, guys. If you're not in here, I want you answering too. Test your knowledge. There you go. Very good. Most of you guys chose the correct um, answer and it's oral hypoglycemic agents. So if mom has gestational diabetes or she's a diabetic and she just happened to get pregnant, guess what? Even if she was on oral hypoglycemics before, now that she's pregnant, she cannot be on oral hypoglycemics. So for the time that she's pregnant, she's going to have to be on insulin because oral hypo, um, hypoglycemics are contraindicated during pregnancy. Hemoglobin and hematocrit values do what during pregnancy? Do they increase? Do they decrease? Do they double or do they remain the same?
Very good. You expect to see the H and H decrease. And the reason you're going to see that hemoglobin and the hematocrit go down is with pregnancy, there is a huge influx of fluid and even the plasma levels are elevated. So think of it as, um, hemodilutional, right? So they basically diluted. So you're going to see those levels, the hemoglobin and the hematocrit decrease. That is normal during pregnancy because of the influx of fluid and plasma. Magnesium sulfate is given to the patient with preeclampsia to prevent what? Hypotension, hypertension, seizures, premature labor. What do you guys say? Keep going on the live, put in the color, very good. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, most of you guys chose uh, the correct answer, which is seizures. Now I'm so proud of you guys because very often, um, Students will choose hypertension. And here's the thing. If the patient has preeclampsia, if we're giving them magnesium sulfate, it's not to bring down the blood pressure. It is to prevent that patient from going into seizures. Now, magnesium sulfate, it has a great side effect of bringing down the blood pressure, which is wonderful, but that's not the purpose. That's not why we're giving them magnesium sulfate. So what I mean by that is if our patient is hypertensive, there are so many better drugs with fewer side effects and fewer adverse effects on the market that we can give that patient to decrease the blood pressure, right? We could give them IV, you know, hydralazine or labetalol, or they might get PO nephetapine, right? There are so many better drugs to to address that hypertensive state. So even though magnesium sulfate, yes, it brings down the blood pressure, which is a great side effect for that patient who happens to be hypertensive, that's not why we're giving it. We're giving it so that patient doesn't go into seizures. Very good, guys. RHD immune glo globin, that's the Rogam, is given to pregnant patients that are RH negative, RH positive, RH immune, or you know what? I give up. I need to study some more. What do you guys say? What do you think? Very good. RH negative. We give the Rogam to the mom that's RH negative. And here's the thing, because if she conceived that baby with dad that's positive, she may have create she may create antibodies that will lit literally attack the fetus. It will attack the blood of the fetus. And we don't want that to happen. So if she's RH negative. She's going to get that Rogam because let me tell you something. The first time in her life that she ever gets pregnant. And if she's RH negative, fetus is positive. Nothing's going to happen to that in that first pregnancy, but it's a subsequent pregnancy because now her body will recognize it. So that's why we give her the Rogam. And here's the thing. We're not going to take any chances because when you're doing the assessment, have you ever been pregnant before? And she'll say, no, you're asking her, but her husband's right there. Her husband didn't know that she had an abortion during, you know, college, or maybe she was pregnant and she had a miscarriage and she didn't even realize it was a miscarriage. She just thought that she had a heavy cycle right? But that still constitutes as a pregnancy, doesn't it? So it's very important. If she's RH negative, she's going to get that Rogam. Make sure you guys know it. Blank is a hormone responsible for stimulating your uterine contractions. Tocolytics, teratogenics, estrogen, or oxytocin. What do you guys say?
Oxytocin. Absolutely. That's the hormone that stimulates uterine contractions. Now, the other ones you need to know as well. So let's talk about them. The tocolytics actually, you know, do the opposite. It stops those uterine contractions, something like, you know, mag salt, magnesium sulfate, which relaxes those muscles or um, terbutaline, right? Those would be considered tocolytics if you're giving it for those purposes. Now, teratogenics, those are things that are harmful that could to the fetus. It could cause death to the fetus. Estrogen, that's the female hormone. You know, it helps with, you know, the repro reproduction. It's important with keeping calcium in the bones and keeping the patient from having osteoporosis. There's so many things that est estrogen does, but that is the primary, that's the female hormone um, made by the ovaries. But for this specific question where they're asking about the stimulation of uterine contractions, we're talking about oxytocin. True or false? The ideal pelvis for childbirth is gynecoid pelvis. True or false? True, true. So the gynecoid pelvis is... Um, the most ideal, the best shaped pelvis so that the fetus can get through the birth canal. Last question. At 20 weeks gestation, the fundal, the, the fundal height should be where? Should it be at the umbilicus? Oh, excuse me, above the umbilicus, at the umbilicus, below the umbilicus, or Professor D at this point, I quit. I give up. Where do you think um, the fundal height should be at 20 weeks gestation. Very good. At the umbilicus. So at 20 weeks, you expect the fundus to be at the umbilicus and the size you expect it to be should be about like the size of a grapefruit. Okay. You guys did a great job. Let's see who won this Kahoot. Third place, Faith. All right, Faith. Second place, G. First place, drum roll, Brooke. Good job, Brooke. Who are runner-ups? Runner Fourth place, Van. And fifth place, Chris. You guys did an awesome job. Everybody that's played along on the live, you guys did a great job. Everyone watching here on YouTube, I know you guys did a great job as well. Please don't forget, if you go to my website, you can book for my NCLEX review. Also, audio lessons are available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you for watching, and you guys will catch me on the next video.